Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at two Happy Model products and Express LRS. Inside this little whoop is a 1S all-in-one flight controller with an Express LRS uh, receiver in there. If you're not familiar with Express LRS, I've done a previous video or two. Basically, this is an open source project that a community of uh, really talented people have come up with ways of improving our range and being able to use other hardware for the purposes of our hobby and that link control and they're getting kick you in the crotch spit on your neck fantastic results it's a friend's reference by the way but uh let me see if i can get this lined up right here you should see once the camera focuses that little ceramic antenna yeah that's what it's got on there and i'll take this out here in just a minute but i've got some flight footage of this that i'll show you and something else that i was impressed about this all in one it runs a 200 milliwatt vtx and as you're watching that footage that i'll start playing when we go down to the desk Pay attention to the range on that 200 milliwatts. I was surprised. So not only do we have ex outstanding control link with Express LRS, but we're also getting some pretty good video performance out of this little guy. So maybe a couple compelling reasons to look at this all-in-one flight controller. Also, we're taking a look at the EX, or excuse me, ES24TX Lite. Yes, I said light there at the end because it is specific to the Jumper T Lite. Don't buy this ES24TX Lite and expect it to work on your X Lite. They have one coming out for the X Lite, and that will be next month. If you can't wait and you have the knowledge and skill set, maybe you can make this work on the X Lite, changing the pinouts, stuff of that nature, but that's not what this is intended for. It's intended for the Jumper T Lite radio. And we'll take a quick peek at that. We're really not going to dive deep into that. They've got pictures and tutorials, and I'm going to make a separate video about flashing the firmware on this and binding it up. So for now, let's uh, get down to the desk, and I'll take apart the little Mobula. We'll take a closer look at that all-in-one board. And by the way, if you're looking for a standard size module in Express LRS, Happy Models got a product for there. Uh, I had that video out maybe a month ago. Uh, I'll link that in the uh, top right-hand corner of your screen, which is probably over here actually. And uh, you can watch that video if you want to. Uh, the short order of Express LRS is, it is competing or it, it has the longest possible range. Uh, Wesley Vardy, he has got a great channel testing the range on Express LRS. And he has gotten, I think it was 33 kilometers out without fail safe. Not necessarily on this hardware with, with Express LRS. Uh, so if you're interested in, in range test results, I would uh, highly encourage you to look for Wesley Vardy's. And that is Wesley with a Z in the Wesley Vardy's channel. Uh, he does a lot of range testing. Uh, but I'll put a link to the video down in the video description as well if you're interested in looking at the full-size module, which which will probably cover a majority of the, the larger radios, if not all of them altogether, and even some of the smaller ones too. So as we get started, I'm going to play that footage uh, over in that corner. And again, I was pretty impressed with not only uh, the link quality, which is outstanding, but the video reception is actually quite good. I, I go way up the street, um, get at least one house between me and the quad, as well as various vegetation trees, etc. Maybe even two houses, depending upon the angle that the quad's at at the time. I go around my house. I go around my neighbor's house. On 200 milliwatt. That's that's pretty dead gub good. So uh, I'm I'm impressed. Of course, this is a sample of one. Who knows what sample of many might result in? Uh, but I let's take a closer look here at the board for those of you that really want to see uh, how it looks and how it mounts. And yes, this is the front of the board now. So our pigtail has changed locations. Everything's kind of been rotated. We still have our USB port here too as well. So that, that's something to be aware of. You can change this. You can turn that back around. And then in beta flight, you can use um, the controls in order to rotate on the yaw axis 180 degrees to, to return it what, uh, what we're used to. You know, old time grizzled veterans might want that pigtail out the back. But as of right now, it's out the front. And Happy Model has been working with Phobos, one of the lead developers or one of the major players within the development of Express LRS in order to accomplish uh, not only this board, but the TX as well as the beta flight version that's on here. And the beta flight version that's on, on here isn't officially supported, but hopefully in the coming weeks, uh, we'll see some uh, commits to beta flight to where uh, it will be officially supported. Right now, you get an odd message anytime you 
plug it into Betaflight, you know, telling you need to do various things to um, make it work, which you don't. But something else that's interesting about this is the binding procedure. Now you can use, if you've got receivers, you can use passphrases and stuff like that. In this particular case where it's built in, a lot like with our SPI receivers, it used to be where you had to actually find the button on the board and press it, or you had to type in a command, depending upon which version of Betaflight was on the board. It might just be frsky underscore bind. Uh, in emu, it's just bind. I think uh, we also had frsky underscore bind underscore um, SPI or something like that. There's three or four different varieties of CLI commands depending upon the beta flight or what version that you have on here. Uh, in this particular one that I'm looking at, it just has a bind button on the receiver page, which is super cool because then you start to see the flashing lights and then you can put your uh, radio into bind mode and it links right up. Uh, this has the ability to run, um, or at least the transmitter has some ability to run different packet rates as well as uh, different milliwatts. But uh, I should turn the board over for those of you that want to get that super fine look. Let me bring it in close to the camera and focus. And Happy Model actually does a pretty good job of creating pen maps uh, on their website. Uh, their website is happymodel.cn. I'll show you in the binding video um, how you update the firmware, of course, you, you should always check the manufacturer's website, whoever the manufacturer is, for updates if you need an update. Myself, if I don't think I need an update, uh, or I don't have a reason to have an update, not just my desire to update, but is there a problem? Can an update possibly fix that? Um, I'll leave stuff alone. I won't bother to update it, you know. Goes along with my, if you have a working quad, leave it alone. Don't fuss with a good working quad. Uh, let me turn this on and I want to show you the menu here. So I've got this about as close in as I can bring it in order for you to see it. But you can see um, I'm running a packet rate of 500 hertz, which is the highest uh, support at the current time. You know, Express LRS is developing, so things could always change there. I've also got the uh, milliwatts at 250, which it can go uh, higher than that as well. And you see that I'm running the RF frequency at 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, you see down here we've got bind and Wi-Fi update. To update the uh, the module, you use the Wi-Fi update. You connect to a wireless network that it says, I think it's Express LRS, but I'll make full detailed uh, tutorial in the next video. Um, so you connect to the Express LRS Wi-Fi AP access point that you see, and then you go, you open your web browser and you type 10.0.0.1. That brings you to um, the website for the module. And then you just uh, select the file to update it. And that comes from the Happy Model website. Uh, you also need to have an SD card in your radio. And you need to use the Express LRS, uh, let me back up here, Lewis script that you see right there in the top of mine. So if I hit enter on that, then you get this menu. Um, first time you do the updating, a little tip, you'll get a warning on screen. So if you get yours before I get my video out. Um, just know that you'll get a video or a, a message on the uh, tea light that, that gives you a warning and one of your options is to force. Go ahead and select force. That then fires up the uh, wireless of the module and then you'll be able to connect to it. Uh, and then you'll do an update and everything will be easy peasy from that point. I was really pleased with the experience of, of binding and using this. The module itself, this housing is metal. I don't know if it's maybe I can. Okay, uh, it's it's metal. I wouldn't suggest messing with these jumpers on the back unless you know what you're doing or Happy Model has told you to for support purposes. Uh, we of course have a USB port down here uh, that could probably be used for uh, programming updates if you needed to program through that interface. This module connects very similarly to how Jumper wants any module back here to connect, although. This does not use the little plastic bit that's on the back. Um, they have good pictures on their website of how you go about it. It's pretty simple. Uh, you, you open the two halves of the shell. Uh, you go in with this little power module board. You stick that to the back of the radio, the actual radio module. And I do suggest sticking that up a little higher. There is a software piece, not software, excuse me, a softer foam piece that's in the back shell of the radio that's round. And if you mount that little connector too low, you'll find that that 
foam has to squish harder. I mounted mine in that location, so I'm advising you mount it a little higher than you think you should need to, so that, that software bit that's part of the radio uh, will clear your wires. Uh, and it's really plug and play. You, you plug in the wires, as you see in their pictures on their website. That's why I didn't create new ones. I thought that theirs were fine, and mine <laughs> weren't going to probably be much better. And, you know, it's a small radio. They're small connections, so it is a little bit fussy. Um, but as far as just plugging stuff in, not a big deal. It also comes with screws to mount this to the back of the radio, as well as all the screws you need to have two halves. I think the hardest part for me was the thermal paste. There is what looks like a sticker that is thermal paste that this comes with, and that goes between this base layer and then the actual module that's inside here. Uh, that thermal paste kind of can create some thoughts of, oh no, it's going to overheat. Well, in my experience of flying it, mainly indoors, because again, I've had a lot of rain recently. I've been flying this pretty much daily indoors since I got it working. So I've had a number of flights on it, and I noticed this casing getting warm to the touch. We keep our house relatively cool. We keep it around 68 degrees, and this casing is warm to the touch. Uh, it's not the sort of warmth where you think, oh, that's going to hurt me or anything. It's just, it's dissipating heat. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, I think they do have uh, future plans for other modules and having a built-in fan, uh, but that will be for those, the, T, the x light sort of radios that can probably supply more power so they can use that, the fan in order to help dissipate some of that heat but you know heat might be an issue in you know high degree areas like if you're in texas arizona if it's 115 degrees and you're out flying one i'd be surprised if you're out flying it's 115 degrees but and then running this module kind of just continuously um, so the thermal paste was the fussiest part i'd just be dainty with it it's not super hardy you you can tear it fairly easily um, but we just want to make sure we get that thermal paste on between the module and the metal brace it, bra bracket here because it helps to conduct heat all over the place. Uh, the antenna that we've got on here certainly isn't impressive. Let me take that off. It looks like it's just cut off. Uh, it doesn't look like it's a manufactured antenna. Looks like they took an antenna and just cut the ends of it, of it off. Um, I suppose it works. both ends look that way let me refocus the camera here zoom in a touch so wasn't impressed with that but it you know i guess form over function How, what else are we supposed to do uh but that was something else i noticed uh, hopefully it's the correct length where you get the best reception but if it is not the antenna is replaceable and it does have the pin down in the connector there let me get these back on Last bit here would be for anybody who's not familiar, whenever you have something transmitting, if it's a radio or a VTX, make sure you have your antennas on before you power them on. That is a quick way to burn out uh, a chip or something of that nature if you don't have this connected. Um, so that's just a kind of a first time warning there. Always have your antennas on on anything that transmits. Receivers can do a lot better without their antennas. Transmitters, they need their antenna. And in closing, I'll put the uh, links to these products down in the video description. Hopefully these come to a lot of different shops and we get these a lot of different places. I think if you have a tea light and you like micros, it's really hard to pass up on this. I think one of the questions that I probably haven't answered is with that higher packet rate, can I tell a difference? And I'm hesitant to say, but you know, this is a fresh, whoop that I was flying around and I haven't been flying a fresh whoop in a while. It does feel a touch more attached or crisp when you fly it. It, but that, that's just my perception. It could be completely a placebo of having a new product. I've flown express LRS on other quads, but this particular one, it did feel a little bit Crisper. Of course, I fly most of my micros with my jumper T light. Uh, sometimes I'm using other radios with uh, larger quads. Um, here on the micro channel, I don't go much above. I've done a couple of four inches, but I haven't flown a five inch quad in three, four years. And I think this changes things. I think it fixes one major problem in micros, which I'm super happy about, is control link. Control link has been a problem with SPI, especially when using the FR Sky protocol. FR Sky has not played well with D8 mode. Uh, we have a lot of people who have gone through a lot of troubles and a lot of heartache that have tried to connect to SPI receivers using newer FR Sky radios. 
And at first guy just doesn't seem to be interested in at least our niche. I know some of you are going to disagree with me, but when it, when it comes to micros and our receivers that we traditionally use, even the RXSR and the XM Plus, you know, some of them are shipping with the new firmware, so you have to go through the process of flashing. A customer doesn't want to necessarily do that unless they just like to do that sort of stuff, which from what I'm reading and hearing is pretty rare. And this fixes that problem. Express LRS, open source project. It's open source hardware. You don't have to buy the happy model stuff. You can roll your own. The components are out there on the inter internet. Uh, there's a great Discord channel that uh, Express LRS has got going. My understanding from speaking to a number of people who have joined that Discord is that the group that are running this project are very helpful and friendly, and there's not any cutthroat or nastiness going on. And uh, so th that helps if you want to create your own. Maybe you want to build your own all-in-one board with Express LRS. Knock yourself out, you know. I sure wouldn't. I don't have that sort of uh, knowledge on, on what would need to happen there. But this will fix that major problem of control link in micros. Happy Model is working on a 2S version of this board. Or they said they're going to be working on it or they are working on it. I can't be certain which it is. And as of right now, the 2S version of this board probably won't have a BTX. Maybe that'll change by the time we see it. Maybe it won't. My preference, of course, again, being microcentric and having some builds where I'm wanting to, you know, cut nearly every gram I can. If we can get a 200 milliwatt VTX on here on the 2S version, I think that would make a lot of people happy, including myself. So uh, coming up here in the next few days, hopefully I will have the binding procedure for Express LRS in this all-in-one uh, flight controller, and uh, I'll be able to help you make sure that you can get connected and have the same flying fun that I've been having. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.